You know, with Unity, our employees get direct access to all 1,200 world-class physicians at UW Health. We can't get that with all health plans. I'm Michelle Bailey, Human Resources Director at Bell Laboratories. Welcome to Isthmus in the Kitchen. My name is Andre Darlington. I'm a contributing writer for Isthmus. We're down in a, a kitchen with Chef Dan Fox, his new commissary kitchen out in Fitchburg uh, for Fox Heritage Foods, where he's going to be processing pork for Slow Pig and... Uh, catering. Uh, we're doing a lot of special events around town, uh, a few pop-up events for Slow Pig. Is this going to be available for retail as well at some point? Or? Retail, we're okay. selling to restaurants and eventually the bigger goal is to backward integrate into a restaurant. Is it going to be called Fox, Her Fox Heritage Foods? Is that the label to look for at some point? Fox or? Heritage Foods, also right. the little Slow Pig sample will be on there. Alright, so if you approval. see Slow Pig or Fox Heritage Foods in the grocery store, you know it's Chef Dan Fox and it's from the kitchen we're standing in right now. Um, what are we going to make today? Well, of course, uh, we're incorporating pork, some okay. of the recipe. Great. Uh, but we're going to start out with some lobsters. All right. Lobster and pork is one of my favorite pairings. So there's like, lots of different theories on killing lobsters, humanely. So some people stick them in the freezer. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> That's pretty humane. <laughs> I'd have to think. I like it. Lots of um, you know, ice pick behind the brain. So how are we going to do it today? Um, really, the best thing is to, I believe, cut the lobster uh, right about right below the head. There's a little line, okay. and we're going to come straight down and through, and through. All right. All well, right. I'm not winning any samurai awards today with my lobster, but I did get through there. At Great. this point, we're going to take off the claws, right at the base of the knuckle, and now we're going to twist and tear tear the tail off the lobster. Okay. Which leaves us with just the body. All right. So since they're nice and fresh, I'm going to use everything in the lobster, okay. uh, every part of the lobster for this dish. Uh, we're going to focus on a sauce for our dish today. So we're going to kind of cut up the pieces of the shell. It's going to help us. We're going to roast these bones. The pieces we mm. save uh, we're going to cook them separately okay. uh, at different times so okay. we, they both get cooked uh, perfectly and we can start our sauce with the shells. You can either roast your bones in an oven, which is probably easiest for us, or in a pan. Okay. I just have a hotel pan. We roast, I have the, the oven at about 400 degrees, uh, roast about 15-20 minutes. Okay. So we're starting out with a classic Miracle. Uh, not including the fennel, of course. Right. So we got celery, carrots, onion. So we're going to rough chop everything. Um, generally, when I'm rough chopping for a sauce, I try to get everything a consistent size. Uh, so peel or not peel, wash really well if you don't. Uh, we're cutting up. This would be like a medium dice rough chop. A canola oil. Canola oil, okay. Any neutral oil will work. With a high smoking point. Higher smoking point, exactly. And then I'm going to add a little bit of garlic. Caramelizing the Miroquois. Okay. Uh, the caramelization adds a lot of flavor and body into the sauce. If you just put in raw Miroquois, um, you're going to start get, getting more of that lighter broth. Uh, I'm not agitating the pan at all. I'm not, it's, I'm not uh, moving things. I'm letting it caramelize. Okay. I haven't added any salt yet So as don't well. stir it around. Don't. Just kind of throw it in and leave it. And I probably added in, I would say, two tablespoons of tomato paste. You can see it's Caramelizing nicely. Uh, so we're going to add our brandy and flambe. So now we're grabbing the lobster shells out that we just hacked in half and put them in the roaster. Those look great. And uh, deglaze all of those little bits that are on there. Okay. Uh, that's a lot of flavor. I don't so want to let want that go. That. Right. That's going to flame up. It, it might. And we at just least. deglaze with the brandy again. That flavor development really does come through in the final sauce. When people talk about not having body or depth in their sauces, um, the reason why that flavor development happens is because we are diligent about all of these steps. We're gonna add just a little bit of water to cover the bones. All right, so now we have our sauce that Dan has made and we have a sauce here that's been going, the same sauce that's been going for about 45 minutes now. So the next step. Next step, I like putting the cream in first. Uh, to work on this sauce because I really do think the cream, the, the 
bones from the lobster really does infuse um, into the cream. Into the cream, you kind of okay. get a marriage of everything. So this is what we're doing with the pieces of lobster, the tail and the claws that we separated from the head and body earlier. So we have our larger pieces, drop our claw pieces in, turn down our heat, and we'll let that sit at very low heat for about four and a half, five minutes. All right. So while the sauce is going for the lobster, we have a big chunk of pork here. As you can see, uh, this is a front shoulder. So we're, we're gonna remove uh, my favorite part of the pig, uh, the copa muscle. Okay. Also the top end of the shoulder, which incorporates the copa, is also called the Boston butt. Now as I cut the copa off, the shoulder blade gives me a perfect uh, guide. Guide for the knife. To take it off. Um, I would saw off your shoulder blade, and that right there is your copa muscle. Beautiful. It's a nicely well marbled piece. I'll cut it right in half so we can see the nice marbling. Wow, that's amazing. All the iniomuscular uh, marbling, uh, sinew, uh, packed a lot of flavor in there. So you cut it in half once, you cut it in half again, lengthwise. Okay. And then we're going to cut little scallopinis, or little fillets. So we have nice a quarter inch pieces, uh, nice little steaks. Okay. So just give it a few solid wax to really open up the tissue and... Exactly, there's a lot of connective tissue, it's a work to muscle. Uh, so we're gonna do a quick cooking application. Uh, so that's why it's important to tenderize yeah, that piece. All right. All right, so we're back with the pieces of lobster that we boiled briefly. Yep, the lobster tail uh, and claws. You want to be careful if you're not familiar with working with lobster, these are little spiny guys that will cut you or hurt you. Uh, so I, to do the uh, claws, I'll kind of pull back, twist a little bit, and there's a little feather bone in there that I try to release. Try and get the feather bone out. Exactly. It's just a lot easier at this stage to get the feather bone right. out. I have my knife. Uh, sometimes you don't want to use your best knife in the kitchen to do this work. Um, you'll crack with the blade. So you just kind of crack it open a little bit. Crack right? it open, yeah, right don't with be... the blade. Easy. In all these shells, you can reserve to make that same sauce. That okay, again. Make. All right. Again, or a soup. A soup. Um, there's a lot of flavor left in there. And we're just going to cut these up into smaller pieces. You can see the lobster is just nicely cooked. Whenever I'm garnishing with lobster in a sauce, I don't like to go too far with cutting up the pieces. Uh, so you want people, a nice big piece, yeah, something people toothy. Tell, exactly, you yeah. Can tell then, that you have a real piece of lobster. Exactly. We're going to actually blend this in a blender, nice high speed blender. And what does the blending do for it? The blending helps re-emulsify the sauce or bring back uh, the sauce so it's a nice mouthfeel, nice consistency. And so we're basically straining a second time here. You have to get okay. out all those last minute impurities. Oh, it's phenomenal. Very Lobster rich. Lobster and butter, it's really rich. So Delicious. to cut that richness, we're gonna touch more acidity. Okay, just add a little, little lemon. Little lemon. And then a little more sh uh, brandy, just a little shot. All right, nice low heat. We do not wanna boil that sauce anymore. I'm okay. just keeping some just temperature keep on warm. it. Okay. Seasoning gently, pepper. Uh, always both sides. I can't stress how important salt is. And we have some flour. All right. So uh, this is called dredging. It's a nice light coat of flour that will stick. Okay, so we'll move over to our pan. Uh, temperature for smoking point, this is canola oil. We're probably at about 425, 450. Okay. Probably a little closer, 450. You can see as soon as it hits, it does pan fry. Uh, that is important. I also have some spinach that I'm starting. There's a little butter right there if you don't mind handing me. All right, so we've got a little spinach in a pan. Throw a little butter in with it. And our pork is getting close. So to finish the pork, I have some butter, lemon, just like you would do with schnitzel. So the butter almost instantly browns. Yes. And then uh, your lemon juice. 
And this is when that flare up can mm, happen. It smells amazing. All right, and we are pretty much there. Remove our pieces. So you just flash them in the butter and the... So our spinach is wilting down. Perfect, and our sauce. Sauce is ready. We are going to add in our fresh lobster meat that we cooked. Okay, back into the sauce. And now we go to the plate. So we have our sauteed spinach. We're going to our pork. Looks beautiful. And our nice lobster. Oh, that looks amazing. A little Put bit. Put a little tarragon on little top. little tarragon. So we have wilted spinach, uh, almost a copa schnitzel, a lobster sauce that we reduced uh, with a little brandy and cooked lobster. Are we calling this the Chef Dan Fox uh, lobster schnitzel? Lobster schnitzel. We'll go that way. <laughs> right. There we go. It looks delicious. Thanks. Want to try? Yeah, let's give it a try. I have to try this hand carved copa schnitzel. <laughs> okay. That is delicious. That is delicious. No problem. You Thank you so much. My pleasure. Pot. Yeah. Absolutely. What a great, great coming down here into the commissary kitchen. Look for Chef Dan Fox's Heritage Foods in store soon. Yeah, in store soon. Right here in Madison.